Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at some recent advances in PC gaming, in particular, an interesting new feature called Edge Game Assist for the Game Bar in Windows 11. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and it's been a while since we've talked about PC gaming. This is um, a space that's been moving really rapidly, and there have been advances both on the hardware side and on the software side. And so on the hardware side, we've often talked about um, these uh, Copilot Plus PCs and MPUs and things like that, but when you look at the Intel and AMD based Copilot Plus PCs, what you see there are the very latest uh, processes from those companies, which also have incredible integrated graphics that among other things can play even AAA games pretty effortlessly. <laughs> like um, this laptop I'm using here is just nothing special, honestly. It's a, uh, a Lenovo uh, Yoga 9 2 and one but it's an Intel Core Ultra 7s Series 2 processor, Arrow Lake, 32 gigs of RAM, which is great, but really good MPU, but also really good integrated graphics um, from Intel. The AMD stuff is even better. So the latest Zen 5 AMD processors are rather incredible. I, on a system with a really high res screen, all the HDR capabilities, all that stuff, um, high res, full of resolution, all the graphics turned on, high frame rates, it's, it's insane. It, it, it's insane. Now, I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to show you Solitaire because <laughs> I'm recording and it's just too much to do to this poor laptop. But if it was just playing a game, like the latest Call of Duty, for example, it works wonderfully. And this is just a mainstream prosumer, consumer type laptop. So on the software side, um, you see improvements across uh, various parts of Windows 11. There's Xbox as the platform. Microsoft has these plans to uh, merge uh, Xbox, the consoles with Windows, the PCs. Um, that's partially rumor, but it's very clear from what they've said and what we've seen that this is where the world is going. And so we have the Xbox app here, uh, which has become a front end to uh, most of the gaming one might do on a PC and will soon be a front end to even more of it. Um, it looks like they're going to evolve the Xbox console so that maybe they play PC games and that they would use this interface or some, some future version of it um, there as well. So we'll see what happens uh, there. One of the big advances, though, over the past year, a little bit more than a year, is native support for new handheld uh, gaming PCs. And these are those things that it looks like a screen with halves of a controller on either side. And the Xbox app, the game bar we're going to look at later, both support those things natively. They look and work differently when you use that kind of a hardware. So the big components here from a software perspective are, again, the Xbox app, the game bar I mentioned, and just kind of general compatibility with hardware, um, like gaming peripherals. So I have a, a non-standard looking purple Xbox controller, but a, a standard, it's an Xbox wireless controller. I have it wired with USB, but it works wirelessly as well. And when you go into um, search here and just type game controller, start to tape game controller, you'll see this kind of old school interface. Um, this is a control panel from the old days. Um, but one of the things it does is it allows you to make sure that all of the buttons uh, here are working correctly. So you can move things around, you can press different buttons. Um, so if you, something's wrong with your controller, you think there's something wrong, like this is a good way just to make sure every it's, it, maybe it's you, not the controller, or maybe there's something else going on. But um, very basic. And it also just demonstrates that when you plug in this thing, it just works with Windows. You don't have to do anything. There's no drivers to install. There's no app or whatever. Um, you can, of course, install an app to configure the controller. And I actually do recommend that you do that. Um, it's called Xbox Accessories. And what this does is it gives you an interface for each of the uh, accessories, typically controllers, but also headsets and other hardware um, that you might have attached to the PC. And you can configure it with different profiles and remap the keys and all that kind of stuff. But actually, uh, the big thing here is the ability to update the firmware in the controller. Now, if you have an Xbox, that happens automatically. So you plug the thing in or you just connected over Bluetooth or the Xbox uh, frequency, and it will do that for you automatically. It will prompt you, um, but you don't get that on Windows. And so if you're playing exclusively on Windows with an Xbox controller, I definitely recommend getting this app. I'm not going to update this now, obviously, but... Um, 
but I could, and I should, and I will actually after we're done here. But this is a good app to have because uh, that's kind of a vital capability, obviously. Um, the Xbox app we have looked at in the past, um, it has evolved in some interesting ways, but primarily this is an interface for the games that you've purchased from Microsoft, whether through the Microsoft Store or through Xbox uh, for the PC. If you have a Game Pass subscription, it's an inter interface for that. I could go in here and say, well, I want to play the Division 2 here, and I could install it. And this would install it from the store, but I get that with my Game Pass subscription. I also have a game, I have my particular prescription is Xbox Game Pass Ultimate or Game Pass Ultimate, and that gives me cloud gaming, which is Microsoft's cloud streaming service. And this is a list of all the games that I could play over that. And these are the ones I've actually played recently that way. So the new Doom game is in here, the latest Call of Duty, et cetera. So um, these stream over the internet. Obviously, you need to have a pretty good connection there, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can go into my library. <clears throat> and these are the games that I own, right? So I've somehow over the years, apparently I've bought a lot of PC games like an idiot, but um, whichever they are, they're available here. And again, same thing. I could go into this game and just say, okay, I want to install it, blah, 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 whatever. So um, that's, kind of, that's, that's fine, right? So this has been like this basically for a long time. Um, you get notifications, you have you know different things going on here, but there's a couple of things you should probably know about here. Let me get rid of that. Um, you get a menu when you click this profile um, icon up here in the corner. Uh, settings, a couple of things with this app that I actually don't like is by default, when you the first time you launch it, it will then launch with the PC when it boots up. And when you close it, it actually doesn't close. It's still running in the background. So I actually turn those things off. I want this thing running when I want it running. I don't mind that, uh, but I want it gone when I'm done with it, right? When I'm done playing the game, I'm out. I don't need Xbox running. And then there's this offline permissions enabled feature. This is um, kind of a squirrely feature. Um, you can only change it three times per year. So you want to do it on a PC that you know you're going to want to play offline on. So for example, the latest Doom game is a single player experience or it has a single player experience. Um, you, I, could con I didn't, but I could configure this to be the PC that I have offline permissions enabled. And that means if I'm on a plane or offline in some other way, I will be able to play that game. It doesn't, it doesn't have to check for the license online. Um, and that could be useful, but you just want to be careful with this because you can only change it three times a year. Uh, and then there are notifications and all the other stuff in there. Um, but the big one here to me is this compact mode. So when I turn this thing on, the UI changes, it gets simpler. I have the controller, so I'm going to use the controller now. And now this is designed to work with the controller. And really this is for those handheld gaming PCs, right? These are things that look like Steam Deck. Um, but we have a bunch of them and there are a bunch more coming uh, this holiday season. And it's the, the point of this is for it to look good on a small screen for one thing. So everything's a little bit bigger. It doesn't look horrible here, but also that it's fully controller enabled. So if I go into any of these screens, if I click on something, I can always get back uh, to where I was, right? Using the standard buttons like you would, um, you know, on an Xbox, right? And so that's, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to actually turn that thing off, <laughs> um, but that's useful. And uh, again, kind of points to the perceived future of this thing as perhaps, you know, the underlying platform for consoles as well. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. Um, I talked about the peripheral. So the other part of this is the game bar. Um, and so I'm, I'm again <laughs> showing uh, the lamest possible game, but it's the one that comes with Windows and it's not going to stress the system too much. Um, typically, I would be playing a slightly more violent game this, but uh, Solitaire is built in. It's fine. So. I could type Windows key plus G to bring up this interface. Oh, actually, I need to make sure it's selected first so it comes up in the right place. So you can see the overlays on top of this game. Or I could use the controller and you hit the white Xbox button and same thing. So a couple of things to this. This also supports a compact mode. So if I put it into, if I could figure out how to do that, uh, <laughs> where is that interface? Um, there is a way to, da -ba -ba -ba, da -ba -ba. there's an interface here somewhere, but it, uh, this allows you to use the controller, right? Um, that little toggle I use is actually one of two ways to do that, but um, I'll just put it back on the normal mode for the mouse. I think it's must be, which one is it? It's bugging me. I can't find it. I'm sorry. I don't usually use this in compact mode, but um, you get this selection of widgets, right? Uh, most of what you see here are the default widgets. Um, but there's also a new feature, which is really cool. Um, I typically put this kind of, I put this on so I can see the frame rate. That's something when I review laptops, I want to see 
um, how well they're performing. I will actually turn that off because it stays on all the time otherwise. Um, but we've got this thing here. So this just debuted as I record this, this feature has finally come out. It's out of preview. You'll just get it automatically. If you have the latest version of edge, this will just appear. There's nothing to configure. It just shows up. And what this is, is a mini version of the edge web browser. It doesn't have to be mini. You can make it bigger as well. And if you pin this, like I had pinned that uh, performance widget before and go back to the game, it stays open. And the idea here is that it ha it may have, it doesn't always, but it, it, it doesn't for solitaire. I actually loaded this myself earlier, but um, what this allows you to do is interact with the game while you're playing the game without alt tabbing to a browser, which a lot of us do. So if you're playing a single player game, you need help with a particular level, you might go and Google or bang and say, I'm playing this game. Here's the level I need to walk through or something like that. Um, you can do that. You can do that here, right? I, I don't know what kind of help I could get for solitaire exactly, but um, I can definitely do that here if I want to. But if it detects the game, um, it actually has a mode where it can use AI to examine the game that you're playing and figure out where you are in the game or what's happening in the game. And then it will give you context sensitive help. So the goal here is that this thing will eventually just be interacting with you as you play a game. You don't even have to bring this thing up. It will just be there running in the background. It will, you can talk to it. It will talk to you. And while you're playing the game, you can get help or just express frustration or whatever it is you might want to do. But in this case, if the, if I was running, say, the latest uh, Call of Duty, I believe the latest Doom probably, I think a lot of the, the Microsoft slash Activision games feature this, it would... Um, detect what you were doing and then provide proactively provide help. You know, it looks like you're having trouble with the, the sniper in the window or like, here's something you could try, which would probably involve a rocket launcher or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a, um, a, a lot of kind of hardcore gamer types might have mocked this feature uh, when it <laughs> was the first announced, but honestly um, this is incredibly helpful. And if you've ever, anyone who's played video games is Googled or you search or whatever to try to find help. And so uh, to me, this is actually a very welcome, addition. So I think this is really cool. Anyhow, it's available now. So if you have Windows 11, update to the latest version of Edge and uh, you'll just get it. You can enable it. You can pin it if you want. You can use it as you go. It's good stuff. And yeah, solitaire. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Someday I'll have a powerful computer and I can do two things at one time, but that day is not today. So uh, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. Uh, we have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday, which you can find at twit.tv slash H-O-W. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you especially to our Club Twit members. We love you. If you're not a member of Club Twit, uh, get access to all the content, no ads, good karma, all the right reasons. Um, you can learn more about that at twit.tv slash Club Twit. Thanks. I'll see you next week.